Hello, today we're going to look at uh, painting the uh, the desert house and more specifically uh, working with adobe walls. Once again we're starting out with uh, raw sienna as the uh, first dry brush coat and again this is uh, it just it's nice when you're working with uh, a, 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 a sort of fixed palette that um, you can replicate and so I quite like to use uh, the raw sienna over top of the the dry brushed um, dark brown that I use for base coating so with the walls I'm obviously doing just the brickwork uh, at the moment and I'm bringing being pretty heavy on this because we want uh, lighter coloured um, uh, stonework on the desert type buildings than we do on say an Italian or French farmhouse sort of wanting to make it more look more sun bleached so again I'm also gonna gonna be uh, fairly heavily coating the uh, the earth supports on these walls um, to uh, again work work with a uh, a lighter palette so we're, we're starting out by putting more uh, raw sienna on here to to uh, work with on our initial coat and as you can see no need to be too fussy with the uh, the dry brush. Move on to another wall, and for the building itself, um, really, there's no no need to uh, to be fancy. Just carry on with the um, carry on with the same theme and the same method of dry brushing. You'd hope that the walls, uh, you know, of your desert compound would be fairly similar in colour and character to uh, the uh, the rest of the uh, building. Don't forget to get the little brick pieces around the edges. Um, can be quite easy to miss if you're not not careful okay and so again here I'm doing exactly the same thing I'm getting the edge of the end of the log uh, log su roof supports as well so I'll do the same on this side working around the window frames trying to make them a bit darker than the rest of the uh, the house when it's finished so I'm going to use the same um, dry brush that I use on the brickwork in the window frames and as you can see I haven't painted the inside of the building yet I'll get to doing that later when we do the the exterior coat I'll use some sand for that Again with the uh, raw sienna it's good to come back and just go over the uh, some of the uh, areas where you want, want it to be a bit uh, stronger. Again the, uh, the raw sienna doesn't, uh, doesn't have a huge pigment loading so it um, sometimes needs a bit more than just one coat. Okay, so next I'm going to dry brush with some uh, yellow oxide 
and try and get the dry brush a little bit uh, lighter than that. And again, we're just aiming for a fairly light coat here um, and brushing downwards as with uh, all of the other um, examples I've shown of, of painting brickwork. And we're going to dry brush the bases with a little bit of the uh, yellow oxide as well. Okay, one of the nice things about uh, the desert building is that uh, the roof is interchangeable with the uh, Italian uh, roofs that um, are available from us. And um, so you can quite quickly change it into a Mediterranean uh, house if you want to. So, well, while I'm doing this whole process, I'm going to paint up uh, one of the uh, tile roofs. Okay, and for that I'm using some of the uh, red oxide um, as a terracotta um, colour for the, uh, the roof tiles. And I'm just going to dry brush this on just the same way that we're doing most of our, the rest of our dry brushing. And um, you'll note that the uh, the dark brown that we've used to base coat works quite well to um, as a sh shading for the uh, the terracotta in the recesses. I'm just trying to start fairly lightly with this. I'm going to try and get some of the red terracotta down into the, the recesses between the um, tile ridges. And then with the final sort of dry brush that I'm doing now, I'm trying to hit, hit the, uh, the tops of the tiles to sort of strengthen that colour a bit. I'm going to come back and give it a, another dry brush um, with uh, a mix of the red oxide and yellow oxide. Um, and this, that'll start as the, the first step towards getting a, uh, uh, yeah, the building up the, the colours. So there we go. Now that the um, the roof uh, has dried a bit. You can see the uh, the red oxide's darkened up quite a bit. So, as I said before, I'm just going to hit the tops of the roof tiles with a mix of uh, yellow oxide and red oxide. Just to brighten up the tiles. go. Right, now I'm going to work work on just touching the, the tops of these uh, bricks with a little bit of the, uh, the sand coloured, um, well a mixture of sand and, and uh, yellow oxide. And I'm going to give the uh, the bases of the walls a very light dry brush of the sand, sandy colour.
and we're going to do the same here around the window frames and on the brickwork on the on the buildings also on the uh, sort of more desert themed uh, roof sections we're gonna do the same now as with the European building I like to add a bit of interest by um, adding some ink, ink washing into some of the detail and for this I'm going to use um, a red just to uh, yeah just to modulate the the color of uh, some of the, the areas here and sort of uh, make it a bit different from the rest of the uh, the dry brush yeah so it's not all the same And I'm going to do that with all of the, the walls as well. Not every uh, patch of uh, brickwork I'm going to, and I'm not going to cover the entire sec uh, section of brickwork with the inkwork. Again, this is just to sort of add a bit of variation. And again, this is just watered down um, red oxide paint that I'm using here. Now I'm not going to use a green and on a desert building because the, the green's really to reflect moss and lichen. Um, not too much of uh, that in the dry climates of uh, North Africa and the Mediterranean. So um, the red sort of just resembles some of the uh, natural iron oxides that are in the, the mud and brick and stone that uh, are used to build the, the buildings. You can use a little bit of black um, if you like, just using just using it to do the uh, the same same thing. Once you've got the uh, the ink work dry, it's time to move on to the uh, applying the stucco color. And for this, I'm just using pure sand colored paint. And I'm just pushing the uh, the paint up to the edge of the brickwork. Doesn't matter if you get some a little bit over top of the the exposed brick. Um, I think that looks quite quite good as well. Just re replicates um, having some of the plaster still adhering to the uh, the building while the rest is uh, has fallen off. And so with the stucco, you just go around and and uh, sort of paint the uh, paint it on and again this is probably going to require two coats that's all right it's pretty quick to put on And just do the same process with the adobe brick walls. Um, yeah, just spread your sand-coloured paint over top, leaving the uh, 
the brickwork exposed and being careful not to uh, get too much uh, of the sand coloured paint on what should be the dirt. Right, oh, as you can see I've uh, gone through and I've uh, um, finished off all of the uh, adobe stucco walls um, with the sand coloured paint and now it's really just uh, up to adding that final touch of weathering to uh, get, get the building to look lived in. Okay, for that process I'm going to use a bit of the um, yellow ochre paint and like I've done with um, with the inking I'm thinning it down with a little bit of water and what I'm going to do is uh, just detail up the the steps and make them look a little bit used so just for this first little bit I'm going to just randomly scatter on the the yellow ochre paint dry the brush off a bit and then spread it around a bit more um, trying to, to give the uh, the upper floor here uh, sort of a a, a walked on sort of feel and make it uh, make the building sort of look a bit a bit sort of used okay so now we've got we've got a nice sort of edging happening to the the stairs spread this out a little bit more and the upper floor sort of up to the doorway there looking a bit sort of uh, more um, foot trafficked I guess you would say okay that's that's fine there we could could uh, also add this a similar sort of touch around the base of base of the walls as well yeah, it doesn't look too bad sort of helps blend it in I guess a bit more to the uh, yeah that's that's not looking too bad maybe a bit bit heavier there we go yeah it's working quite nicely okay right well the next step of course um, is to do a little bit more dry brushing um, to bring out a little bit more life to the into the uh, the building now I've just used a little bit of sand I've got a little bit of sand here on the brush and it's just the lightest amount I'm just gonna highlight the, uh, the roof tiles with this the edges especially Sorry about the rain, uh, that that sound in the background is the rain on the roof and my boys are also home from school so there we go, it's that's, that's got the, uh, the roof looking a little more dusty we can also do much the same to the um, to the brickwork making it look a little bit more sun bleached and add a add a touch more dry brushing to the uh, to the bases as, as well of the walls yeah now as a final highlight I'm just going to add a bit of bit of white to the edges of the walls just to um, to highlight the uh, stucco work as well so 
obviously we need to go a bit lighter than the sand color that we've uh, previously used so yeah just using white and so yeah we'll just add that um, dry brushed of white to the tops of the walls and to the corners as well just to sort of edge them and bring out the highlight once the dry brush is nice and dry we can also hit some of the um, the brickwork as well and I'm just going to go through and do that to the rest of the uh, the walls and the rest of the parts of the building as well just to give it that final touch try to stay away from uh, the base because the white will look a bit too bright over top of the uh, the sand I've just gone and hit a little bit there but I can cover that up with flock later okay as you can see um, I've uh, finished off all of the uh, dry brushing and weathering got a nice light finish on the tops of the, the stucco walls and um, I'm now going to move on to uh, flocking the bases of the uh, the wall sections so yeah we're just going to get a bit of flock on here um, just to, to sort of make them look a bit more natural okay to flock the walls it's just a few dots of PVA glue Gently spreading them out with the brush. And then um, popping them into the container with the flock in, covering them up, and then giving the whole container a bit of a bounce. The bouncing uh, helps settle the, uh, the, the static grass down into the uh, crevices between the already stuck down static grass and uh, helps it to stand up and again Spreading the glue out with the uh, the brush, and then into my my tub of flock, just burying the the wall section in the flock and giving it a bounce. Now my flocks about a 50-50 mix of static grass and um, chopped foam flock 